uh, when the Wall Street Journal talks about Putin wanting to mute dissent. And yesterday uh, we had a conversation where uh, I think it was uh, uh, Tom Nichols who said, Vladimir Putin, what does he want? He wants it to be 1975 again. Which reminds me, when we talk about muting dissent and controlling this country of Ukraine, Pandora's out of the box. I remember in 1983, Dr. Chotner teaching me Soviet history at the University of Alabama. We were talking about the deployment of the Pershing II cruise missiles. And the question was asked of Dr. Chotner, uh, how fearful are the Soviets of the cruise missile? She goes, they're far more worried about a Xerox machine, which, of course, that takes you back. <laughs> but it was all about the spread of information. They, they feared the spread of information. Here we are in 2022. It ain't 1975. It nine, it's not 1983. Vladimir Putin is a man out of time, is he not? If he thinks he's going to be able to stifle dissent in this information age. Joe, he's a, he's a man out of time and he's a man out of touch. He, he sits in the Kremlin, isolated. The circle of advisors around him, I'm told, has shrunk and shrunk until it's just a handful of people. They're hardliners. Nobody who might say, uh, Mr. President, I, I, I don't really get the plan for how you're going to get your troops out of Kiev once they get there. That person is not allowed to talk to the leader. And he's been in this isolated, brooding uh, period during COVID. Nobody sees him. People can't even get in to talk to him. Remember those crazy pictures of him at the long table? You know, what kind of what kind of a leader is that who sits, a, you know, is like a bowling alley table? Uh, but that's that's Putin. And we're seeing, I think, uh, in this unrealistic policy driving the invasion, the, the effects of that isolation, uh, Putin imagines it's a different time. He, 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 he's, he resents the way Ukrainians are becoming Western modern people. He didn't like it. He wants, he wants things to be the way they were in the old days. And these essays brood on, on how the, the Soviets wrecked uh, our Russian oneness and they go back to Catherine the Great. I mean, they're just, they're all over the lot. Um, but Putin is now going to have to have his own reality check uh, as Russians begin dying in this war. And the evidence that the Ukrainians do believe they have a country and are fighting for it comes, comes back to him. Uh, and, th and then he has to think, as we had to think with Iraq and Afghanistan, how do I get out of this? Uh, and as he breaks it, he'll own it or he'll own the consequences. So I, I, th I think your, 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 your point about Putin uh, being out of, out of time and out of touch uh, is, is one we should remember, even as we think of the, the, the brave people in these buildings, you see the pictures. I saw, I saw a picture on social media of a mother near Kharkiv as a, a Russian jet was storming past her house and, and, and dropping bombs, and her little child just screamed, wailed. And this mother grabbed the child, and you thought, as we need to in war. That could be me. That could be me and my child, my grandchild. And the, the, this howling child was taken down to a basement while the bombs fell all around her. What did that poor little child do? Nothing to deserve what, what's, what's happening to her. So th these are people like, like, like all of us, like you and me, who were facing something that they ne clearly never imagined would happen. Uh, and it's you, just you we want to be in so solidarity sad. with them, even as they fight alone. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.